All right, guys. So I was doing uh, wormholes, and I, after solving wormholes, I learned this cool trick how to generate no duplicate pairs in an array. So when I mean by no duplicate pairs, I mean like let's say we had like an array of numbers like one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So when then if you want to generate pairs, our pairs of arrays would be like um, one, two, and then we have three, four, then five, six, right? And then um, the next pair would be is probably like one, uh, one, three, two, four, and then five, six. So these are like arrangement pairs. That's what I mean. And then we have one, four, two, five, two, five, and then three, six. And then we have one, five, and then two, four, two, three, and then four, six, and so on and so forth. Okay. So this is what I mean by pairs. And then when we say a pair, we're basically saying that um, pair one, two is the same thing as pair two, one. So like pair one, two, this is the exact same thing as pair two, one. Okay. So basically what we're trying to do is we're given an array of numbers and then we're trying to pair up every two number together except uh, there's no duplicates between these two pairs okay so then yeah so you, you don't you when you have pair one two and you pair three four then five six um we're not duplicating pairs then two one and then four three and so on and so forth okay so originally what i thought to solve this problem in order to pair no duplicate pairs i thought you could just like generate all permutations so i was thinking like do one, two, three, four, five, six, and then do like one, three, four, two, six, five, six, so on and so forth. And then in order to be able to figure it out and just pair those together and then remove the duplicates, but that takes so long. So um, after doing wormholes, I actually learned how to do this and it's actually a pretty cool trick. So what you do essentially is that you need to um, create an array of pairs. And then uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna like loop through the array of pairs and then we're just going to pair each one with its corresponding uh one that is not paired yet and then sooner so on and so forth until we reach the end and once we reach the end um we just add it to our array and then we unpair it okay so once we pair it we have to unpair it as a backtracking and then at the end we'll be able to solve this problem oh yeah so uh, by the way when we say pairs we're saying like each of the like arrangement of pairs so this would be count as like one type of pairing one type of arrangement and this would be another one type of arrangement and so on and so forth um we're not actually saying like just generate pa all pairs like one two and then one three and one four uh one four no that's not what we're saying because that that would be too easy because for that, you just have two for loops and then you just pair I with J. That's so that's that's not what we want, but yeah. What we want is like each of the arrangement pairs. Okay, so how do you do this problem? Um, first of all, we need like an array of like pairs and the current index, we say the ith index pair it will be paired with the jth index. So whichever at the current number location we're going to pair it with its current location so what that means is that um if we look back to paint um at the zeroth index if we have zero and one as a pair at zeroth index we're going to pair with one and then at the oneth value we're going to have a value of zero okay so that's what it means and then like if we have three two as a pair at the third value we're going to have the value two and then at the second value we're going to have the value three so what we need here is actually just like a vector of integers called pairs. And um, for now, let's actually just make our size uh, six because I think that's what we had in this example, right? We have a size of six. So we're gonna have six. And then for all the values, we're gonna just have it integer underscore max. And this just represents like a placeholder if it's not paired yet, then we're just gonna have it that, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to recursively call it and then pass in like the current index that we're on and then like our pairs. Okay. So yeah, now we're going to have the current index and then our pairs of indices that are paired. Okay. And we're going to pass it by reference. Okay. So, um, how do you do this? So 
basically we're just going to recursively go through like all the values here and then if it's paired um if we if we reached all the end of the array right if our index reached all the end of the array um that means it's already paired that means we're like we're done okay so what we're going to do is we're going to if our index reaches n um so n is the size of our we're going to create like a variable called n it's going to equal to the size of our pair so if we reach the end of the array that means that everything's paired up so all we have to do is literally just print out the values so let's just do that uh pairs at i and then we do new line and then we just return okay so if we reach like the end of the values we're just going to print out all the values of our pairs for finish pairing with every value we just return in the end all right um now i'm going to check if the current index i'm on is already paired so if it's already paired then we don't need to do anything right because like what's the point we just go to the next one so how do you check if it's already paired um, so right, remember we uh, what I said earlier in the video is that if it's unpaired, we have a placeholder called underscore underscore max, integer underscore max, which we just filled it with like two million something. So if it's unpaired, so if our current pairs at our current index is unpaired, so that means it's um, well if it's not equal to in integer underscore max, right? This means it's already paired right so if it's already paired um we could just go on to the next value right we don't have to pair it up anymore so if it's unpaired we just recursively call the next one and return so um what is our current index our current index is index so if we're going to recursively call the next one we just do index plus one so we go to the next one and then we pass in the same thing so this is if it's unpaired so if it's unpaired we ignore it so unpaired ignore go to the next one okay so now here's the difference is like now what we're gonna do is um we're actually we're gonna we're gonna pair it up with the other values so how do we pair it up with another values um, we need to search through the array right so what we're gonna do is um we're gonna search through the array and we're gonna search through from the next value so if our current value, let's say we're currently, so let's say we, let's say we're on index zero, right? And I want to pair index zero with something. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to search through from one to the end until I find another unpaired pair. So if I already find another integer, if I don't see, if I find another underscore integer underscore max, then I'm going to pair it up with zero. Okay. So for that, we're going to loop through from J is going to equal to our current index plus one. And then we're going to go to the right. So J is going to equal to the current index plus one. And we're going to go to the end and plus plus. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to check if this value is unpaired. So if it's integer underscore max, this means it's unpaired. And what we're going to do is we're going to pair it. So to pair it, we're going to do pairs at index is going to equal to J. And then pairs at j is going to equal to index. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to recursively call it on the next values. So we're going to just go to the recursively call this and just to pass in our current index plus one. Okay. Now, um, once we pair them up, all them values are paired. Uh, we're, we need to unpair them, right? Because we want to generate the next values. So this is called backtracking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do pairs at j where we're since we just paired pairs at j is equal to integer underscore max, uh, I mean pairs at j just paired with a current index, we're just going to set pairs at j is going to go back to integer underscore max. Okay? So that means now it's unpaired. Okay? So, yeah. And that's the end of this. Because once you pair it, we're going to, we, there are situations where it's not paired, so we have to generate that one. And then at the end, I'm just going to do pairs at index is going to equal to integer underscore max because I want to unpair my current pair. So the reasoning behind this is that let's say we were at, so let's say where we paired up zero with one, right? So then zero becomes one. This, this is going to be zero. And then we pair up two with three. So this is three and this is two. So 
So this two is with three. And then we pair up four with five. So this is five and this is four. So now we have, um, yeah, four, five. Now, um, there's situations where two, four, five was not paired, and there's situations where two, three was not paired, right? So if we have to unpair two, three in order to get two, four, for instance, right? And we have to unpair four, five to get like three, five, right? So like in order to do that, we actually have to unpair the, what we originally paired up so we could get the next values. And I think that's pretty much the gist of the code. So if we run this, it should generate all possible pairs. Um, yeah, hold up, bam. And then that's what it is like, okay? So now we generate all the p possible pairs. So one, zero, three, two, five, four, um, one, zero, four, five, two, three, um, one, zero, four, five, four, three, two. So yeah, um, in this case it would be like zero is paired with one, two is paired with three, uh, four is paired with five. And this one's like zero paired with one, uh, two is paired with four, and then three is paired with five. And then this one's like zero paired with one, three is paired with five, four is paired with, uh, wait, no, zero, one, two is paired with five, three is paired with four. Yeah. And each of these are completely different, gen uh, different pairs and they're completely unique. Okay. So yeah, um, that's the gist of this code. I hope you guys under understand this video. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe. We, the zeroth is paired with like each of the index is paired with its corresponding pair. But yeah. So yeah, this is how you recursively generate pairs of uh, no duplicates and they're not duplicated pretty much. But yeah, rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.